Hello and welcome to this webcast on Polish jazz. My name is Jane Cornwell and I am the jazz critic for the London Evening Standard and a writer for music magazine Jazzwise. This webcast is with Piotr Orzechowski, aka the Piano Hooligan. Piotr is a Krakow-based pianist and composer and an artist in the true sense of the word. Uh, he is the first Pole to graduate from the master's degree offered by Berklee College of Music in Valencia. And aged 21 in 2011, won the Montreux Jazz Piano Competition. He has been hailed as the most creative and uncompromising of young Polish jazz artists, and he's certainly the most award-winning. He has collaborated with contemporary music composers Philip Glass, Steve Reich and Krzysztof Pendereski and the Polish National Radio Symphony Orchestra, as well as the DJ Scalpel and Adrian Utley from the British band Portishead. He performs as a soloist with leading Polish orchestras and has toured with iconic jazz musicians, including Randy Brecker and Avisha Cohen. In 2019, Piotr's High Definition Quartet released their third album, a new solo album is on the way. So hello again, and thank you so much for being with us. We're just going to watch a little bit of you in action right now. Said you want to revive the spirit of jazz and self-expression in music and kind of get away from this very academic uh, field that so much um, Polish jazz perhaps has had. I was raised as a, someone who just get a lot of joy out of creating music. It became something natural for me. Later on when I saw other musicians or in general jazz scene trying to copy the style of other musicians, I became frustrated with the situation and uh, I made a strong point in myself that I have to change this situation, I have to be strong. When you say copy other musicians, you mean American jazz musicians? Mainly, but it is more about uh, creating idols in general. It was a very strong trend in Poland and I felt just strong desire to become a rebel towards this. Your mom was a classical pianist and your dad was really into jazz. Do you feel that this is where your kind of aesthetic comes from at this intersection of the two genres? And, and did you feel any pressure to be a musician? The pressure was there, but I never felt it because I always loved to play. So I treated it like a toy, the, the piano. I'm still into this form of creation, which is playing spontaneously. Just a great fun for me back in the day and now as well. What's your earliest musical memory? Playing single notes, you know, and, and trying to achieve anything out of this. Or composing, just aesthetically creating scores, you know, uh, out of nothing. We've got some footage of you here uh, as a child. Cześć! I fortepian tutaj stoi. Ja bym chciał grać na fortepianie, więc idę do szkoły muzycznej. Ale będę grał na fortepianie, no i na gitarze basowej. Chodzę na ćwiczenia różne, no i jest fajne. Cześć! You've said that you never had a problem playing jazz because of, I suppose, this idea perhaps that, that you were actually playing. But the classical concerts, performing classical concerts stressed you out. Why was that? For a long time, I found myself uh, as a victim of uh, musical education, which was trying to portray the musical composition as a strictly planned set of notes. And I perceived the, the musical piece primarily as an act, act of creating. I was kind of confused. On, on one hand, I was very much into classical music and into interpreting classical pieces, but I just felt much more free uh, when improvising. It was later on when I started composing my own pieces, then I realized it's different. The classical music is also about musical act. I was trying to do it very correctly. Being correct is not 
something you should think about when interpreting the piece. To interpret a piece is to replay the act of creation, but I understood it later on. Now at 21, you won, famously won the Montreux Jazz Piano competition. Let's just have a little look at you playing and winning. Did winning a prize like that change your career? How did you not let it go to your head? It was just a very strong motivation for me. It was my first competition when I showed my solo abilities, my, my solo pieces, early stages of developing my own language. Tommy Lipuma, the president of the jury, told me that I should never give up on what I am doing, and this is the right way to go. So <laughs> it was very important for me at the time. A confirmation that I should keep working and stick to this path I had. I was always into specific musicians more than genres or even specific tunes which I just liked, which were changing me. I was listening to, to many things, hip hop, rock music. When I started to listen to to jazz, for sure my influences were like Herbie Hancock and Keith Jarrett. Later on I found guys like Lenny Tristano, Tete Montalieu, many more because as I said I was more into like specific musical messages they were creating, less the whole curve of, of, of some musician. At the same time, the classical music was always <laughs> very important for me. I was listening mostly to Renaissance music and Romantism, actually. So, so Skrabin, Shostakovich, but a strong influence, for example, was uh, uh, Carlo Gesualdo. There seems to be, in some ways, a kind of duality to your approach to the piano itself, because you play this very beautiful, um, uh, sometimes pristine, uh, elevating sound on the outside, on the keys. But then you have this other kind of persona where you're playing in the guts of the piano. What makes you decide which approach to take? After the, the competition, Montra, I started to realize that I have to think out of the box when it comes to Yes, I treated this as a way of expressing freely. It was at the time when I was releasing the, the, the first album. I felt obligated to try the new ways, new, new paths, new techniques in order to enrich my language. That's why I called my album Experiment, because it was an experiment actually with the sonoric aria of musical language. I wanted to use it as my own tool for expressing myself. And that's why I ended up with Pandereski's music. Tell me what you loved about his music and how important is it that the younger generation hear it? He was the rebel who rejects musical rules from the past. So I could use his music to test my own possibilities. He had the spirit of jazz in his in his music i realized it later on his music was just a big enigma what i wanted to do is tr try just try to play it and improvise on this by doing so i was getting deeper and deeper into his actual musical thought rather than just the overall shape of the compositions like polymorphia Were you worried at all about Pendereski's reaction to you approaching his music? Of course, it was very, very stressful situation <laughs> because it's, it's his tunes and I just knew uh, how I recreated it and how different is my language. But <laughs> the 
from the beginning he was kind of a part of, of this project. We have a clip of him introducing you here um, and I think he was pretty pleased with what you did. So let's have a little look at that as well. Cieszę się bardzo, że dzisiaj wieczorem w moim rodzinnym mieście odbędzie się wykonanie mojego bardzo wczesnego utworu z lat 60. przez wybitnego pianistę i kompozytora pana Piotra Orzechowskiego. Ma to wielkie znaczenie dla mnie, że właśnie ta muzyka z lat młodzieńczych jest ostatnio częściej grana i rozumiana przez młody, młodych słuchaczy. Your second solo album is 2014's 15 Studies for the Oberek, which examined the Polish Oberek dance via uh, contemporary music and jazz. What was your motivation for this album? Was it something to do with reclaiming and revitalizing Polish folk music? I just thought I should dig into Polish folkloric music to understand it, to understand my own roots, roots of my artistic language. So I treated Oberek, one of our dances, as a model, and I tried to explain it musically use it as an area of investigation. That goes back a, a bit to what you were saying about um, Polish jazz copying um, American jazz. So this is actually really getting into the roots of Poland and Polish music itself, isn't it? For sure. I also wrote a master degree on, on this topic. So this is all about trying to be original but not in terms of just being different. Later on, I understood I, I have to go further than just simple shape of the dance. Then we have your monumental uh, 2017 piano double album, 24 Preludes and Improvisations, also on Decca Universal. was clearly inspired by Johann Sebastian Bach's 24 Preludes and Fugues. What was your aim with this album? I tried to answer the question how it's possible for me to express myself through act, how the composition is different than improvisation. So I did this double album which contained a set of compositions and set of improvisations just to find out in what way I'm in my crea creation when composing and when improvising. What am I actually doing when creating? Let's talk a bit about your high definition quartet. Since 2013, you've released three acclaimed albums, including Jade in 2019. <laughs> Muzyczna interpretacja e, fragmentów dziadów to, to jest coś zupełnie nowego. What's your aim with this quartet? Because this is another facet of you. From the beginning it was about getting to know each other, talking to each other on some deeper levels and sharing those feelings which are created on stage, no matter if we played my tunes or we were doing some remakes of Lotusławski music or like here we are interpreting literature in the end it's it's sharing those special feelings of being together very close. Is there anyone else you would love to uh, approach in your in your piano hooligan way? With Kuba Bjancek we play a lot in do and sometimes we do such things like reinterpreted the variations by Goretzky, soundtrack of Dracula movie by oh, really? Wojciech Killer. Now I'm more into my own thoughts. I just focus on my own work, but for sure in the future it can happen. 
Thank you so much uh, for spending time with us and uh, thank you for the music and we will see you next time. Thank you very much. Bye. <laughs>